Hi guys, this time we're going to sort out the tunnel and pull the engine out. Let's give it a go. But first, let me take a selfie. I need to measure the distance between the exhaust outlet and the chassis rails, which comes out at about 180 millimeters. On this side, we're looking at 180 again. I guess what I'm on at the engine is pretty separate. So let's go pull it out. So before I actually pull it out, I just wanted to show you what I've done underneath. I've reinforced the chassis rail here with a bit of uh, bit of bent steel, a bit, bit of something. Pack welded it in at the moment, but it will be welded in properly eventually. And then I made this brace that goes across the from from each side to give me my sort of cross brace because the standard Lexus one doesn't work. Also, like I said in the previous video, this isn't a Lexus gearbox anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much. I made a, a bracket to hold the exhaust up in, in between here. It's only temporary at the moment, but eventually that will be welded up nicely and it'll hold the exhaust in the right place where I want them to be. Uh, the bracket itself, hold on, let me move here. The bracket itself holds the rubber mountains, which then go onto a separate bracket which actually bolts it onto the gearbox itself. So it's kind of like a double stack thing. It's not the best, but it'll do. Anyway, two nuts here, maybe two nuts up here. Nope, just two nuts. Anyway, two nuts here and the whole thing should lift up and out of this. And when that's up and out, then the whole thing comes out of the car. I may undo these bolts just to make my life a little easier. There it goes. Gives you a bit of a better view of what's going on up there.
Now that behemoth out, we can take a look at what I've done in the engine bay. So we've got this, I'm gonna call it subframe, it's not a subframe, but it, it, it's an engine mounting chassis. Uh, boats into the car, which I'm gonna put some extra supports here, just to make sure. So it, all of this can be bolted in and out, uh, as of what I need to. The engine mounts, I think I said before, they're Land Rover stuff. Uh, I don't know why I picked Land Rover, I think they were cheap. These sit here, there's holes with tubes supporting uh, through the inside. I'll show you a picture of that now. So that shouldn't be a problem. And then on here then I've got these nice big thick plates to hold the standard anti robot for a full focus. Now, some people will recognize it's not in the right place. The reasons for that will become clear later on. So you may be able to see a big gaping hole in the subframe. This is where the subframe used to go, goes down back here somewhere. You've got mounts for the anti robot, the steering rack, etc. Obviously with the front longitudinal engine, none of that gets in the way, but with this monster in it, it's like smack in the way, so I had to get rid of it. So I cut it out, painted it all off. I painted it all up nicely when I pull it all out to make it look nice and stop the rusting. So obviously taking a big hole out of the subframe, I had to put some bracing in. This ain't going anywhere. It's probably stronger than the original stuff. I think I went a little bit overboard with this, but it ain't going anywhere. And it gives me something to mount the steering rack to. Now the steering rack caused me all manner of issues. But, I will come to that later. Just to give you a better idea and a better look at what I've got here. This is the steering rack, it's bolted here, it's bolted here. I don't know if this is gonna cause me a problem to be honest, but I thought as long as the steering rack is solid and not gonna go anywhere, then I should have pretty good steering feedback. And here, as I said, this is the I think six mil steel plate with about 20 mil round bar welded together to make the uh, cross brace. This here's a better view of the anti roll bar and the mounting system that I've got going on. So these are the standard anti roll bar mounting with the standard bushings off the Ford Focus, and normally they sit horizontally where on the Focus subframe so I had to move it around a bit and I've actually mounted them vertically it's, it's exactly the same mounting system it's just I've made it fit into this car it's pretty close to the bottom but there's plenty of room and the bend goes nicely over the steering rack so here where the steering rack goes up into the car I had a bit of a problem this got in the way as you can see over that side it's got a nice flowing piece of steel that's welded onto the subframe itself whereas this side it did have a nice flowing piece of steel which came right in the way of the steering rack Mr. Angle Reiner come out I cut this off welded a bit more steel in just to secure it make sure it was all going to be steady and not compromise the uh, structure of the subframe and that gives me enough room to get the steering rack to go up into the car in the right place. And finally, we're on at the tunnel. As you can see, there's not much left of it, or there's more now than there was previously. I've already started building it back up. But I started chewing away at here, as you can see with the terrible cut marks, just to get everything out of the way, just make sure that the engine could fit initially. I managed to get that in. Now it's just a case of welding it all back up somehow. So right here is the heater matrix in and out from the engine bay. That had to stay in place because I wanted to keep the interior of the car all the same. I didn't want to go messing about moving heater matrixes, fans, etc. So that, that had to stay in place. Thankfully the, the gearboxes, every, anyone I've used, have fit in the gap. But cut up and around. This is where the old column used to go through to the steering wheel. That's not needed anymore, so I've got to patch this up, but obviously there's a big hole there anyway, so uh, that, that's going to be part of the patching up that I'm going to do. Other than that, 
all this metal has just been welded in for now. Uh, shaped, welded in to try and give me some sort of semblance of a car back together. The tunnel so far is coming along nicely. Anyway, enough chat, let's get to work. So the whole reason for pulling the engine out is I wanted to fill in this hole here. It's one of many, but this one's probably the most complicated because we've got the heater matrix in the way. So what I'm gonna do is take a leaf out of uh, Bad Obsession Motorsports book and use some CAD. That's cardboard aided design. For those of you who don't know what cardboard aided design is, A, why haven't you watched Project Binky yet? And B, why are you watching me and you haven't seen Project Binky? Anyway, basically what you do is you take your favorite pizza box, put it up where you need to go, draw around it, cut it out, and then you have a template to cut out in steel. So in this case, this bit isn't big enough. And then there were two. Why am I still teaching you how to do this? You should already be watching Project Bingo, that. Huh? Voila. Cut roughly the size. Normally what I do now is actually get it shaped and make it fit a little better. But what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna weld it and then hammer it in place. I think that's gonna be the best uh, solution.
Next up, this side, this time, it's cheap oats. And there it is, tunnel is pretty much done now. Uh, we've got the hole for the heat the matrix uh, in out. I had to patch up here because I made a right dog's dinner out of everything. And some of the welding isn't great, but that'll do pig. While I was down underneath, I welded up a few of the seams right here. And it's all pretty good on there. Now all I need to do is put some seam sealer onto it. Inside, this is what it looks like. I've only got a small hole that I've got to fill in. I'll do that another time because I've kind of got bored working with metal and hammering stuff. Bit of um, well through primer on it and it all looks pretty good. I only caught fire to the car once. Which is good. Now all I need to do is work a bit on this. It's ugly, I don't like it, and I'm gonna fix it. Even though it's all covered and it's all functional, I still don't like it and I'm still going to fix it. Well, that's it for today. I got through more than I expected to with getting that tunnel all tied up nicely. A couple more things that I need to finish off, but I'll sort them out, they don't need to more. Next, I'm going to seam seal it all and hopefully put some of the car back together so it resembles the car again. And the so if you like this episode, please give it a like, thumbs up, subscribe, do all the business. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.